So one of the parts of chapter five and just torsion in general that a lot of students get caught up on or, or, or a little bit mixed up with is simply uh, the statics of getting the internal torques from uh, a shaft with different types of torques applied to it. Again, just like in chapter four, one of the exercises that I had you go through was to determine the internal normal force and provide a, a diagram across the length of a column. And fundamentally in chapter five with a torsional member, it's really all the same exact steps, but it, for one reason or another, it tends to be analy analytically a little bit difficult for students. So I just wanted to go through an example where we follow the torsional sign convention that we've talked about and we'll talk about again, and just go through the statics and get the internal torque diagram uh, for a shaft. So this is all provided up on one note as well too, but here we have the given information. We're given a isometric view of a shaft. And we're shown the loading on that shaft. We have four different torques applied to it. And we have points a, B, C, and D across the length of the shaft. And at point A, we have a moment that's 80 Newton meters. At point B, we have a moment in the opposite direction that is 150 Newton meters. At point C, it goes back to the original direction. We have another moment, another torque applied and that is 60 Newton meters. And at point D, it's going in the same direction as at point C, and that is 10 Newton meters. And all that we're asking for here is simply to provide the internal torque diagram. So here it's asking us for an internal torque diagram. All right, so the first step in any of these torque problems that I recommend doing, I even call it step zero sometimes. Step zero that I would recommend is to take this isometric view and to turn it into a two-dimensional view where the moments, the torques are not shown in this kind of arcing way, but they're shown with a two-dimensional double-headed vector to represent uh, the magnitude and the direction of the moment. And again, we apply the right-hand rule to display those torques. Instead of in this way, we show it with a two-dimensional double-headed arrow. These are both equivalent. 80 Newton meters rotating like this, the right-hand rule is that you take your right hand, you curve it in the direction of the rotation, and then whichever direction your thumb is facing, that is the direction of the, the vector. So here, 80 Newton meters, that double-headed vector pointed to the left, that means the rotation at the top of my hand is going into the screen. Whereas this 150 Newton meters, to get my hand to curve in that direction, I have to turn my hand around, it's cur curling this way, and so the vector would be pointed to the right. So that's how we're gonna change all of these isometric view vectors or moments into a two-dimensional vector to make the analysis quite a bit easier. So I'm taking this, this shaft, I'm gonna draw it down here in two dimensions. Okay, and we still have the same points. We still have A, B, C, and D. But here, when I draw the moments in two dimensions, I'm gonna use the right-hand rule. So A is gonna be pointed to the left. B is going to be pointed to the right. C is gonna be pointed to the left. And the moment at D, the torque at D is also gonna be pointed to the left. So here at A, I have 80 Newton meters to the left. At B, I have 150 Newton meters to the right. At C, I go back to the left uh, with 60. And D, it's also to the left, and that's gonna be 10 Newton meters. I'll draw a coordinate system down here as well too. And so this is my 
two-dimensional free body diagram that's representing the sense and the magnitude of each of these vectors, these torque vectors that are shown up here in kind of the 3D view. The 2D view makes the statics a lot easier and during tests I'll walk around and I'll see students that have left it in this direction and they'll often get uh, the sign and the direction incorrect. So it's a very good first step. It doesn't take very long. It's going to reduce a lot of errors. So now that we've represented this in two dimensions, the next step is simply going to be making section cuts to determine the internal torque between each of these points of load application. Again, unless you have a load being applied, you're going to have a constant internal resultant. So here between A and B, there's nothing applied in between. There's no external torque in between those points. So it's going to be constant. So all that I need to do is make a single section cut between A and B. So here's my section cut between A and B. And then I can choose to keep either side of uh, that section cut for my free body diagram. And whichever side I take away, I simply replace that with internal resultant. In this case, the only internal resultant that we're going to get will be an internal torque. And so let's start doing those section cuts in FBDs in step number one. So here we're going to do section cuts. We're going to make a free body diagram for each. And then we're going to apply our equilibrium equations to determine the sign and the magnitude of the internal torque. The exact same procedure that we did for axial members. So first we're going to go with section AB. So I've made my section cut between A and B and we're going to draw our free body diagram. So I have just a small segment of the shaft itself. Here's my section cut. All right, for all of these FBDs, I'm going to use the same coordinate system. So I'm just going to draw that up here at the top. Y will be vertical, X will be positive to the right. And the things that I'm missing, I need to put my external torque is usually the first thing that I do. So I have a double-headed vector pointed to the left that's 80 Newton meters. So that's going to stay on here because we didn't cut that off. 80 Newton meters pointed to the left. And so now we have our internal torque that we need to draw on here. And the sign convention for torques, if we're drawing it in two dimensions, is exactly the same that it would be for internal normal force. In other words, we point the vector away from the section cut and the portion of the shaft that we left. So we left the portion of the shaft over here. Here's our section cut, so we have to point the internal torque vector away. And again, that's not to say that we know that it's truly going to be going in that direction. We don't know that torque AB is actually going to be going in that direction, but if you always draw it that way, then the sign of your final answer is always going to follow our sign convention. So just do yourself a favor. Don't try to figure out, I mean, in this case, it happens that the torque vector will be pointed to the right. But if this 80 Newton meters was flipped around, I'd still draw the internal torque like this. It's just an assumed direction. And it's not a matter of whether it's right or wrong. It's the assumed direction. This is the only thing that matters in terms of our sign convention. If we flip it around, we'd get the wrong sign. OK, so always draw it away. And so now my, my free body diagram is complete here. The only thing that we need to do is simply run equilibrium. So equilibrium for this, I'm going to sum the moments about the x-axis. And just based off my coordinate system, positive x is to the right. So I usually draw that convention to the left of my sigma notation. And again, just to kind of step back again, Whichever way I assume is positive, just for purposes of summing these up, that won't affect my final answer. The only thing that would affect my final answer is whether I drew this to the right or to the left. So always draw this away from the section cut. Whether x was positive to the left or positive to the right, it won't affect the final answer. You can flip this around if you want to, you'll get the same result. So I sum the moments about the x-axis equal to zero, in this case, all the arrows pointing to the right are positive. All the arrows pointing to the left are negative. So this would be negative 80 Newton meters plus torque AB is equal to zero. Just solve for torque AB. I get that torque AB is equal to positive 80 Newton meters. Okay? But just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, like I said, 
the assumed direction of this internal torque is the only thing that's going to affect our answer. Another common misconception that students get is that they think that this is what we would consider our sign convention. It's different. This is our sign convention, which way we draw our, our assumed positive internal torque or internal normal force. This direction right here, this is what we call our coordinate system. And all that this does is it allows us to uh, put positive or negative signs when we write our equilibrium equation. It doesn't affect the final answer at all. It's just the convention. I don't even want to call it a convention. It's just the coordinate system when we add up these values, whether they're relatively positive or negative compared to each other, it won't affect the final answer. So for example, if I were to do that same exact equation, sum the moments about the x-axis equal to zero, and if I were to say that when I add everything up, if vectors to the left are positive, the equation will look slightly different, but I'll get the exact same result. So if vectors to the left are positive, here's a positive 80 Newton meters. This is pointed to the right, so it's going to be negative minus torque AB equal to zero. I get, I get the same exact result. All right, I just move the negative TAB, I add positive TAB to either side, and I get that the torque in member AB is equal to positive 80 Newton meters. It's the same exact result. The assumed direction here matters. The coordinate system doesn't matter at all. It won't change the final answer. Okay, so that was member AB. We'll go through member BC and CD. When we get to CD, we're going to choose a different uh, side of our section cut to keep just to make sure that you understand the sign convention uh, flat out. Here with member CD, I'm going to make my section cut. All right, my section cut is between B and, I'm sorry, we're looking at, we're going to look at BC first. I make my section cut between B and C. I'm going to choose the left-hand side again. And so my free body diagram is going to go all the way down here to A. The section cuts right here. And so I have a little bit more member here to deal with. Here's my section cut. And we have, I usually draw my external forces first. So I have my 80 Newton meters to the left, my 150 Newton meters to the right. So I'll draw those on the free body diagram. All right, 80 Newton meters to the left. Here at point B, we have 150 Newton meters to the right. I can put the points here just for reference. And then the direction that I draw my internal torque in, I just, just ignore the, the external forces, external moments. Just don't even worry about those. Don't try to assume which direction this is actually going in. Just always draw the internal torque away from the section cut, okay? And that, that will always get the sign convention correct. And so we already have our coordinate system up top. And so then I'm simply going to do the same equilibrium equation procedure. I'm going to sum the moments about the x equal to zero. I will say that vectors pointed to the right are positive just in terms of summing everything up. And so I'll get negative 80 Newton meters plus 150 Newton meters, which is that torque at B, plus my internal torque between B and C. T, B, C is equal to zero. And so here I'm going to get a negative value for the internal torque between B and C, which simply means that in reality it's pointed in, but that's fine. That's going to follow our sign convention. The torque between B and C is equal to negative 70 Newton meters. Okay, and that's following our sign convention, so that's great. It's fine that it's negative. Don't worry about trying to flip this around or anything like that. Just leave it as it is. And then finally, like I said, to make sure that you have that sign convention down pat, we're going to look at member CD. And so member CD, I'm going to make an, a section cut between C and D. But now instead of choosing to keep the portion of the shaft to the left of the section cut, I'm going to keep everything to the right of the section cut. And so my free body diagram, I have the remainder of the shaft, I have the section cut right here, and I have my externally applied torque of 10 Newton meters that's pointed to the left here at point D. And again, this is point D. So now 
the only thing left is to draw my internal torque. And again, the sign convention for drawing an internal torque or internal normal force is that it points away from the section cut. So here, because we kept the rest of the shaft to the right, that means that this is going to be pointed to the left, this internal torque. All right, so our internal torque CD is going to be pointed to the left. Again, if I kept the shaft to the left of the section cut, I would have ended up drawing my internal torque to the right. I would have gotten the exact same answer. Both the sign and the magnitude would have been exactly the same. And you can feel free to go through one of these examples and verify that on your own. So here, this is complete. I have my coordinate system up there. So I'm going to sum the moments in the x, about the x equal to zero. Vector is pointed to the right. I will call positive just for purposes of summing this up and creating this equilibrium equation. So I get negative torque between, T and, uh, between C and D. I get a negative 10 Newton meters because both of these are pointed to the left. That is all equal to zero. So I get the internal torque between C and D is equal to negative 10 Newton meters. Actually, I think we have time. I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll do this example as well. But I'm going to keep the portion of the shaft to the left of the section cut. And you're going to see that we get the exact same result. All right, so here I'm going to draw my free body diagram if I kept everything to the left of the section cut instead of to the right. So there's my section cut. And now I need to draw all my external torques acting at points A, B, and C. So I have an external torque at A. Right, that's 80 Newton meters to the left. At B, we had 150 Newton meters to the right. And at C, we had 60 Newton meters to the left. All right, now we're going to draw our internal torque. And just like up here where we had kept the portion of the shaft to the left of the section cut, here we're going to draw our internal torque between C and D in the po assumed positive direction which is to the right, away from the section cut. This is my internal torque between C and D. Okay, so both of these are going to give us the exact same result, but just to prove that, all that I'm going to do is I'm going to sum the moments about the x-axis equal to zero. Again, my coordinate system is going to fall the same one. This won't make a difference for the final result either. And I will get negative 80 Newton meters plus 150 Newton meters minus 60 Newton meters plus the internal torque between C and D is all equal to zero. Okay, so what this ends up being is that I get positive 150 minus 60 is going to be positive 90 minus 80 is going to be positive 10. So I'll get positive 10 Newton meters plus CD equals zero. In other words, TCD, the torque between C and D, equals negative 10 Newton meters for equilibrium to be satisfied. All right, relatively straightforward, the same exact procedure that we do for axial members. And the last step is simply going to be to draw an internal torque diagram. So because I'm out of space on the board, I'm just going to draw it over here. Ideally, we want to draw our internal torque diagram in line with our loading diagram. And so I'll make a little bit of space. I want to make sure that everything kind of lines up. My torque, I'm just going to plot on an XY. And the critical points where our torque is going to change is going to be at point uh, A, point B, point C, and at point D. And again, we want to label our plot, so on this, uh, actually we don't have any distances here, so I'm just going to call this x, but if we knew what the units were, I mean, this is all in newtons and meters, so I could assume this would probably be in meters, but our problem didn't give us any distances because it wasn't important for the problem. Here on the vertical axis, we know what the units are. This is going to be internal torque, and it's going to be in units of newton meter. And so now I'm simply going to plot out what the torque diagram looks like. So for section AB, it's a constant positive 80 Newton meters. 
All right, so positive 80 Newton meters. At that point, it goes down to negative 70. And it'll be constant all the way from B to C. And then we go to negative 10. So it jumps up to negative 10. And so you can see why the sign convention is important because when it starts getting to the point where we calculate changes in angle of twist, the positive torques are going to counteract or twist in the opposite direction as the negative torques, and that's why it's really important. One other point I'd, I'd mention, a good way to check your work on this, and if you want to use this to actually produce your torque diagram, that's fine with me as long as you can explain it on the test or on the homework, that going from left to right across this shaft we can check that our torque diagram is appropriate by two simple rules. So as we go from left to right across this loading diagram, any vectors pointed to the left will cause an increase in my internal torque equal to the magnitude of that externally applied torque. Any vectors pointed to the right will cause a drop down in my internal torque equal to the magnitude of that externally applied torque. So here I always start out at zero. So I started at zero. The first loading that I see is this vector pointed to the left of 80 Newton meters. That means it's going to jump up 80 Newton meters. I go from zero plus 80 will be 80. That's going to be constant because there's no intermediate torques until I get to B. When I get to B, I, I'm, at, I'm at positive 80. But because I have an externally applied torque that's 150 Newton meters, I go from positive 80 minus 150. That takes me from 80 to minus 70. That's going to be constant until I get to this point C. 60 Newton meters pointed to the left. That means I'm going to jump up 60. So from negative 70, I'd go to negative 10. Constant all the way to point D. And then I have a vector pointed to the left, 10 Newton meters. So I'm going to go up 10 Newton meters. I go from negative 10 to 0. And you should be able to close out your torque diagram that way. So it's a good way to check your work. If you want to explain those rules and then only use that to develop your torque diagram, that's fine, but you need to make sure that you can explain that properly where I could follow your instructions or your rules and then recreate the same thing. Okay, so this is the, the first step for any uh, shear stress calculation for a, a torsional shaft or even any um, angle of twist type calculation for an internal torsional, uh, for a torsional shaft. So important to get this down again. Fundamentally, this is all static, so this should all be review, but we often see a lot of problems when it comes to just this basic step. So it's a really important first step uh, to be able to do kind of in your sleep.